yesterday we talked about slope. It was a very short lesson, but we talked about slope yesterday. We talked about how slope is delta y over delta x. It is the vertical change over the horizontal change. It is rise over run. All of those things we think of when we hear slope. So if we've got a skateboard ramp, and those are the coordinates of the very bottom and the very top, then what would be an estimate of the slope of the skateboard ramp? And that would have to be assuming that it was linear and it wasn't curved like that. So we'll do our best guess at the slope since it does have a curve and it's not perfectly linear. So do you see how in this warm up, and sometimes the problems that the district comes up with, sometimes they do that too, or they get them from a released EOC or whoever writes these. Sometimes they do a similar thing. They tell you something like, it has a height of seven feet and a horizontal run of two feet to five feet. And you're like, ooh, that sounds kind of complicated. But then you look at the picture and you realize, oh, they already put all that data in the picture. So it's kind of redundant. So you didn't really need to worry about what was in the wording. Not that I'm telling you you don't need to read things. You still need to read it. But it was a little bit redundant. And so um, I still recommend that you circle your X's and underline your Y's. I'm sorry if you think that I'm babying you. But to find the slope, we would do underline minus underline over circle minus circle. The change in y over the change in x. Whichever coordinate you start with, if you start with the 7, then you have to also start with the 5. So just make a note of which one you start with, OK? All right, so our numerator would be 7, our denominator would be 3, and that would actually be the slope of the skate ramp, 7 thirds. 7 thirds would be the slope. Okay. Um, we are about to check our homework, but we I don't think we got to this problem. I showed you one of these, but we didn't have a chance for me to show you one and then for you to try one. So let's go ahead and do this problem real quick. That other problem didn't take up much room on your warm-up, so save some room and let's do this problem real quick. A line with a slope of 5 fourths passes through 8 13 and x negative 7. Find the value of x. All right, so we would set this one up. It's kind of like yesterday where we were talking about, like, I gave you the answer and I'm kind of asking for the question. It's almost like Jeopardy. So we know the answer. The cat is out of the bag. It is 5 fourths. 5 fourths is the slope. So now we just set up our equation for slope. y minus y over x minus x. And then we clean it up and we cross multiply. So when we clean it up, we have 5 fourths equals, what is that, negative 20? And I was talking about yesterday, if you can use number sense and just go like, oh, 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. So 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. And you figure out what x is doing that, that's fine. It, it might not always work out that pretty. But what you can definitely always fall on is cross multiplying. So 4 times negative 20 is negative 80. And 5 times x minus 8 would be 5x minus 40. So you would add 40 to both sides. So negative 40 equals 5x. Let's divide by 5. Who got negative 8? Did y'all get it right? Yes? Yay! Let's check our homework. Slope of a line worksheet. There were 20 problems. I hope you tried the stuff at the bottom. I hope you didn't get bored by the stuff at the top and go, oh, I'm done with this homework. Because there were a lot of slope problems, but there were some good problems at the bottom. So please ask me about them if you have questions. So we're going to start by working number 13. Oh, sorry, enable editing. OK, 13, find the missing coordinate. Oh, we just kind of did this a few minutes ago, but I'll do it again. Um, so we know the slope, and we know the two of the coordinates, and we just need to find the question mark. What letter is the question mark? Is it x or y? Definitely x. 
So we just pretty much did one like this. Slope says y minus y over x minus x. I put an x there. Okay? So we've got negative 4 thirds equals, this is kind of nice, because x minus 0 is just x. Lars, what's the answer to this question? There you go, negative 6. You can cross multiply or you can use your number since, okay? 8 times 3 is 24. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x, and you simply divide. Did I answer your question, Lars? The next one was number 14. I'll capture this whole thing. Um, 14, 15, and 6, 14 through 17 actually lead perfectly into today's lesson. It's really nice. So, um, A, B, and C are vertices of a triangle with a right angle at point B. So, you didn't have to draw these, but just to give you a visual, this is at 1, 2, so that's A. This is at 3, 4, so that's B. And this is at, let's see, 4, 3. So that's a right angle right there. Sorry, my triangle ended up tinier than I thought it would. Anyways, um, it's saying find the slopes of the legs. So you had to find out which one of these are the legs, because remember a right triangle has two legs and one hypotenuse. So which ones were the legs? Well, the legs, um, I didn't put my C on there. The legs are going to be A, B, so find the slope of A, B, and B, C. So we're doing what it says. We're finding the slopes of the legs. So the slope of A, B, let's see, that would be Y minus Y over X minus X. And the slope of B, C, that would be Y minus Y over X minus X. So let's see, that would be 2 over 2. And this one would be negative 1 over 1. And so that's what that one was asking you to do. It didn't make a whole lot of sense, but it has to do with the fact that B is a right angle and that those two sides are perpendicular, and that is actually today's lesson. So let's look at the answers to 14, 15, 16, and 17 again. Because I'll just teach you today's lesson while we're going over the homework. Why not? Let me teach it to you right here. What do you notice about 1 and negative 1? About 3 and negative 1 third? About 2, negative 2 and 1 half? About 3 halves and negative 2 thirds? What do you notice about the answers to 14, 15, 16, 17? The problem told us that, the, that there's a right angle there. And it wanted to find the slope surrounding that right angle. So I'll take 17 as probably the best example. So in 17 it was saying, okay, there's for sure a right angle at B. And the slope of one of them is 2 thirds. And the slope of the other one is negative 3 halves. And you probably learned in algebra that those slopes are called opposite reciprocals. Very good. I see you typing that. Those are called opposite reciprocals. So when two lines are perpendicular, aka they form a right angle, their slopes are opposite reciprocals. And that was actually what we were going to discover in the notes today, but you already discovered it through the homework. And so that's a wonderful lead into our lesson. We get to skip a few slides now. Um, so that's the parallel slide. But let's go ahead and look at the perpendicular one real quick. Instead of taking time to count the slopes, we already figured out that if two lines are perpendicular, their slopes are going to be opposite reciprocals. Their slopes are going to be opposite reciprocals. So that's our conclusion. Perpendicular lines, their slopes are opposite reciprocals. Now, the opposite of being perpendicular is being parallel. So, 
if we look at this side right here, if you were to count the slopes, I was going to have us count the slopes and write them down and compare them, but I don't want to waste our time for the quiz. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. Okay, so the slope is negative three-fourths. Then you would count this one and you'd be like, oh, the slope is negative three-fourths. There is no difference in their slopes at all. One is not positive and the other one's negative. We didn't flip them. We didn't do anything. Those slopes are identical twins. They're the exact same slope. So when lines are parallel, they have equal slopes. So if you are a note taker, you're writing that down in your notes. Parallel lines have equal slopes. You do nothing to them. Nothing at all. Don't touch them. Perpendicular lines. If we were to find those, um, let's see, what was it going to be? One, two, three, four. Okay, so this one's four thirds. Actually, that's this one. I love that I can do that. And the other one was negative three fourths. So the conclusion on that one is that when they're perpendicular, their slopes are opposite reciprocals. Their slopes are opposite reciprocals. Okay. So that was the meat of the lesson. Um, kind of just an extra thing. You don't actually really have to know this, but to check. When you multiply the slopes of two lines that are perpendicular, you'll always get negative 1. So like if we tried that one, if you multiply the slopes of two lines that are perpendicular, so if you were to multiply those two together, you'll, their product, what you'll get is always negative 1. So if you wanted to check to see if two lines are perpendicular, you could always multiply their slopes. Look, 3 times 4, it's already negative. 12 over 12, which is negative. So that's just an extra bonus piece of information. Before we get into actually solving things, I want to make sure we all know how to come up with the opposite reciprocal. Opposite means change the sign from positive to negative or negative to positive. Reciprocal means flip the numerator and the denominator. Flip the numerator and the denominator. So opposite means change the sign, and reciprocal means to flip. Yes, I bet your algebra teachers did show you that. Oh, they didn't show you the negative one thing. No big deal. I'm going to call on students, and you're going to write, you're going to type the answer in. Don't write them down yet. Perfect. Okay. Which one of these are the toughest ones? Probably the ones that aren't a fraction to start with. I think they're a little bit harder. The opposite reciprocal of 4, you have to remember that there's really an understood 1 underneath the 4. So make sure that when you flip and switch 4, you're getting negative 1 fourth. When you flip and switch 10, there's no reason to put 10 over 1 because that's understood. So that's just 10. And then how do you flip and switch 1 over 1? Well, you would flip it and you'd still get 1 over 1 and you would make it negative, but you don't write 1 over 1 because that's not a polished answer. Okay? So 1 and negative 1 are opposite reciprocals. They are. 1 and negative 1 are opposite reciprocals. We're going to do a few problems and then we're going to dive right into our quiz. Find the slope of AB. Then find the slope of a line parallel to AB and perpendicular to AB. Let's find the slope. Alexandria, tell me what you get for the slope. Um, Abbas, you can do the slope perpendicular, or sorry, parallel. And Ariana, you do the slope perpendicular. Lots of A names. I'm ready when you are. y minus y over x minus x. What are y'all getting? All right, so the slope is negative one-third. The slope of a line parallel is negative one-third. Notice, you don't touch the slope. Students sometimes want to take the negative off. They keep the one-third, but they want to take the negative off. No, they should be identical twins if they really are parallel. Parallel lines have the same slope. 
And then the perpendicular would be the opposite reciprocal, which would be 3. Good job. Okay, are these lines parallel, perpendicular, or neither? Now, we haven't talked a whole lot about the equation of a line, but you probably remember from last year, y equals mx plus b, right? Where m is the slope. So the slope of this line is 4. What's the slope of this line? Well, we don't know the slope of that line until we solve for y. You don't know the slope until you solve for y. So we have to move the 8x over. Negative 2y equals negative 8x minus 6. And then divide everything by negative 2. y equals 4x plus 3. I divided everything by negative 2. So the slope of this one's 4. The slope of this one's 4. So are they parallel, perpendicular, or neither? Good job. They're parallel. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's do this one because we're running out of time. Parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So we love when it looks like this because we already know the slope of this one. It's 2 thirds. This one has some work to be done. So the slope of the first one's two thirds. The slope of the second one is negative three halves. Very good. So they are perpendicular. Remember that's the symbol for perpendicular. Okay, last problem. Yep, last problem, and then y'all can start your quiz. Find the value of x so that the line through x3 and 2, 6 is perpendicular to the line through 0, 2 and 6, 6. Whoa. So we have all these coordinates, and we need to force these lines to be perpendicular. Your starting point is always going to be slope. Your starting point is going to be slope. Let's find the slope of the line that we want to be perpendicular to. Let's find the slope. Ready? y minus y, y minus y, over x minus x. 4 over 6, 2 thirds. Now we want to be perpendicular to 2 thirds. So what slope do we want to have? I hope that you're thinking this, even though you're not typing it. We want to have a slope of negative 3 halves. That's the slope we want. So now we're going to treat this problem like I already worked from the homework, like we already did after the warm-up. We've already done problems like this. It needs to go through these two points, and it needs to have a slope of negative 3 halves. So y minus y over, I didn't mean to put my x last x minus x, and then you just cross multiply, okay? To give you time, I'm going to stop right there. I'm not going to solve for x, but I set it all up for you. The answer to that problem was 4. <laughs> you need it to equal 3 halves. 3 over negative 2 would get you the negative 3 halves that you needed. So you needed a negative 2 in the denominator. 2 minus 4 got you the negative 2.